Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, and Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Starting with the Isaiah passage, Isaiah 64 and 6, we've heard this. I want you to hear it in this context and what the word really says. Is that all right? Here's what the word says. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you. That's not right. So, I'm going to read it. 64 verse 6. <laughs> it says this. But we are all like an unclean thing. And all of our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as the leaf and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And then in Romans chapter 10... Verse 9 and 10, Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, says these words, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made until salvation. If you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought or this theme, filthy rags and cleaned hearts. Filthy rags and clean hearts. I don't know if I'm going to preach this, if I'm going to teach this, if I'm going to hoop holler, if I'm going to dance, if I'm going to cry. Don't know which way we lean in this morning. I'm just going to talk about what I'm talking about. Is that all right? Filthy rags and clean hearts. Three things I want to lift up before you before I take my seat. First of all, the same story. Secondly, different encounters. Third, same results. Put that in your notes. The same story, different encounters, same results. Can I tell y'all a secret? Really, it ain't a secret because it's on Facebook. Every non-believer has the same story. If every non-believer has the same story, then we can conclude that every believer has at least one chapter just like everybody else. Boy, y'all should have shouted already. The story of a non-believer is found in Isaiah 64. Y'all ready for this? Isaiah does all of this writing to conclude this one thing. Y'all ready? God, when you come down here, here is what you're going to find. We are all filthy rags. Boy, y'all should have shouted right there. He, he did not delineate. He did not say that some of y'all were napkins and some of y'all were paper towels and others were washcloths. He said, all are like filthy rags. In other words, everybody before they come to Christ has the same story. We are all like filthy rags. It don't matter if you were a crackhead, a dopehead. It don't matter if you was drunk. It don't matter if you were sexing. It don't matter if you were lying. The word said, take all that out and put it this way. Filthy rags. Whoa, I don't know about y'all. That made me feel good right there. The, the fact that y'all ain't better than me. Made me want to shout right there that I know some of y'all can put your nose up and some of you can have an air about you. But the word says, you ready? In our own righteousness, it's like a filthy rag in the sight of God. Now, see, the problem is some of y'all don't think you was filthy. And because you don't think you were filthy, here's why Isaiah has to say this. You have developed in your mind that you can be righteous by yourself. Oh, Lord, help us today. You've, you've made up in your mind, as long as I give some money to the poor, as long as I take my clothes to goodwill, as long as I give my canned goods to my kids to take to the food drive, that I am righteous. Yeah, here's what the word says. In our own righteousness, that it is like a filthy rag in God's eyesight. Why? We cannot be righteous outside of Christ. 
you mean you mean to tell me that, that I can I can give all my money away, I can feed the homeless, I can clothe the naked, and still end up in hell? And the answer is yes. In fact, you need to understand, without Christ, all of us are going to hell. And if you haven't accepted him, you already in hell on your way to hell to be in hell for eternity. So, so it's, it's the same story. It's the same story. It's, a, it's whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are Hispanic, it is the same story. That before we come to Christ, all of our good deeds don't mean nothing. All of our good intentions don't mean nothing. It is nothing to, for God to look at you in all of your goodness and say, that ain't worth a quarter. Why? It's not until we get to purpose that we find righteousness in Christ. So we, so we, so we, so we, so look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at him and say, we got the same store. We got the same. Look at you. Look, look, let me look at him. I mean, don't, don't, don't give him no side. I look at him. Matter of fact, look at him and say, you thought you was better than me. I, I just found out same, same. You, you thought you had it going on. Same, same, same. My, my, my righteousness in me wasn't no better than your righteousness in you. And in fact, unless Christ comes and saves us, our righteousness would still be as a filthy rag. Now, I'm not going to break down what Isaiah meant by filthy rag. I'm going to let y'all do y'all homework uh, this week. In fact, some of y'all need to go back and look up that word filthy rag, and y'all going to really get a picture of what God feel about us and our righteousness. And uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell y'all because some of y'all going to get offended if I told y'all if I told y'all the whole truth. But 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 that filthy rag is not is not some dirty rag that you use to wash the car. It's not that dirty rag that you use to pick up dog done. That dirty rag is a different dirty rag. In fact, that dirty rag has some symbolism of who makes you righteous. Why? Outside of the blood of Christ, you cannot be righteous. And so he said, "Your filthy rag." Y'all, y'all, I'm go- I almost gave y'all the answer, but I'm not going to give y'all the answer. We- same, same story, same, same story, same. So, so, so you grew up in Chicago, and you grew up in Ardmore, and you grew up in Wichita, and I grew up in Tulsa, and you grew up on, on a farm, and, and we all got the same, the same story, that, that the sin on the farm and the righteousness on the farm wasn't worth a quarter, and the righteousness in Ardmore wasn't worth a quarter, and the righteousness in Chicago wasn't worth a quarter, and the righteousness in Tulsa wasn't worth a quarter, and we all come to the same conclusion that if our righteousness ain't worth a quarter, then whose righteousness is? And that comes the point to you ready. We may have the same story, but we have different encounters. Now, here, here's the problem with church folk. You want everybody to get saved how you got saved. But you ain't told the truth about how you got saved in a long time. You telling everybody that you got saved on the third Sunday when the pastor was preaching and the choir started singing, but that ain't the truth. It sounds good and it plays well with other church folk and other church folk look at you and say, hallelujah. But some of us know the truth of the matter that God didn't save us inside the church, but God saved us on the outside of the church. Is there anybody in here that can be real and say, my encounter with Christ wasn't inside the church wall. God encountered me out there. And here's a great thing. The same God will encounter all of us differently and individually. Uh -uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You you mean mean to tell me when I was high, that voice I heard wasn't a cush? Uh, Let me help you out. Cush ain't that intelligence. If something made you question the existence of who you are, that wasn't cush. That was the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. If something got in you and questioned you and made you ask yourself, am I better than this? That was El Shaddai, more than enough. If something found you one day and shook you and said, you ought not be laying in this bed when you got a bed on the other side of town. That wasn't baby. That was the Lord encountering you individually. Boy, let me help y'all out. I am glad that God does not encounter me like he encountered y'all. 
Because if he encountered me like he encountered some of y'all testimony, I'd still be lost. Reverend, I want to testify this moment. First giving honor to God, to, to the pastor, to the ministers, to the deacons, to everyone's, everyone's. I want to tell y'all what the Lord has done for me. The Lord found me. I was deep in my iniquity. I was deep in my sin. And the Lord found me. And he did such a wondrous work in my life that I am no longer the same. And I thank God, hallelujah, for what he did for me. Now, everybody starts clapping and saying amen. But how many of y'all know that wasn't the truth? God did not find you in some generic sin and some generic iniquity. God found you at the whole house, the crack house. God found you high, drunk. God found you lost on your way to hell. And how many of you know, unless you tell the truth, you can't let other folk get free? Folk are in here needing to hear the truth, but you keep making it pretty. What nothing pretty about how he found you. Now, before y'all say, well, I was always in the church, praise God, so was I, third row from the back, had my little old Olo on and my little old slacks, still on my way to hell. Why? Because without him, my own righteousness was a filthy rag, and it didn't matter if I had been drunk, it didn't matter if I had been smoking, all that didn't matter. Even my good stuff, Jesus said, it ain't nothing but a filthy rag in the Father's eyesight, and so that made me no better than you, but my story was still ugly, because he still had to tap me on the shoulder and tell me that I still needed a Savior, and what I was doing wasn't right. It just so happened that my sin was private. Y'all see him with public. Just so happened y'all didn't find me drunk on the corner. Y'all didn't see me stumbling on my way home. But I was creeping. Say it for me three times, David. Creep, creep, creep. And see, if we're not careful, we think our creeping is better than the public drunkenness. If we're not careful, we think our pretty lies are better than the person struggling with drugs. If we're not careful, we think our pretty uh, 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 low self-esteem is just a mental health issue and we won't call it what it really is. Well, y'all have to forgive me. My family suffers from mental health disease, mental health disease, and, and, and I thank God that that the Ritalin is working. Let me help you out. There is not a physician in this nation that can heal you of your disease. That's why they call it practicing medicine. If you think I'm lying, somebody can testify. The same medicine that worked over there for that person didn't work over here for me. Why? Unless God steps in before you take the pill and while you ingest the pill, won't nothing change. Is anybody here know? I don't mind telling the doctor thank you, but my ultimate thank you goes to Christ, who is the ultimate healer. Boy, different. Come on, come on, come on. Different, different. Shh. Different account. God, 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 God. Shh, God, shh. Don't, don't, shh. Look, look straight at me. Look, shh. Look straight at me. When, when you think about your true encounter with God, shh. Your, your true. I mean, that. I ain't talking about the Hallmark movie. I'm not talking about the, the pretty music. I'm talking about your real encounter with God. Some of y'all can look in the word now and say, shoot, they ain't got nothing on me. Jacob wrestled with him, but there's some folk up in here and say, we didn't even wrestle. God was fighting me fist for fist. See, y'all don't want to talk to me. See, Paul can say he knocked me off my beast, but some of y'all can say not only did he knock me off my beast, he laid me on my back so that he could deal with me. You see, when God really encountered you, you got to testify and quit trying to be all pretty and politically correct. God ain't worried about no political correctness when he encounters you. Y'all, just come on, come on, come with us. Y'all, y'all better, y'all better go back in here and look at this. Y'all better, y'all better look at how God been encountering folks 
from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I don't know about y'all. I ain't seen one pretty story yet. No, no. I mean, listen. Jacob was by himself, and there he wrestled with an angel. And he wrestled all night long. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that sounds crazy. And he wrestled long enough until the Lord broke his will because whenever God's will comes into contact with your will, somebody going to die. And most of us can testify we died right there and gave in to his will. And if you haven't, that's all right. Keep on living. God will not give up on you. And so he, he wrestled, he wrestled. Y'all remember, y'all remember he wrestled? Y'all remember he wrestled? Y'all remember, y'all remember, y'all remember? Y'all remember? Y'all remember? He, said, he said, let me go. It's daytime. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He said, what is your name? And he said, listen, my name is my history. My name is my sin. My name is my righteousness. And the angel said, your name shall no longer be that, but it shall be Israel. He changed his name. When did he change his name? In the middle of a wrestling match. And God said, I'll wrestle you too if that's what it takes to get you to get to me. Listen, some of us got to fall on rock bottom before we come to God. Some of us got to lose everything. Some of us got to have some folk walk out. Some of us got to be lied on. Some of us got to have the truth told on us. Whatever it takes, God said, I just want you. I'm not worried about what it takes. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Same, same. Different encounters. Boy, 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 y'all. Some of y'all, be honest. If your neighbor knew where God really found you, they wouldn't even sit next to you with their judgmental self. If they really knew where God was talking to you at and what you was doing when God talked to you, they wouldn't even know how to deal with you. And that's why they don't understand your praise because you ain't been honest about your deliverance. If you was honest about your deliverance, they could understand how you praise him and how you worship him. See, because you think, you know what I'm saying? Someone, someone said, Davis, you act like everything is all right in your life, and you ain't never had no hard times. I said, man, listen, let me tell you. And, and again, I, I, don't, I don't take credit. I, 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 Deacon Turner taught me these words. I just don't look like what I've been through. I'm like, man, if you only understood what Main Street was all about, then you would understand what I've been through just to get here. If you want to know why I don't deal with drama, you got to learn how to live between prostitutes and gang members. Y'all miss that. If you live in a neighborhood where to go to school, you got to walk past the prostitutes and to go to the park, you got to go past the gang members and God covers you so that you didn't fall here and you didn't fall there. You didn't catch a straight bullet and you didn't catch something else. If God did that for you, then you would understand why drama just can't come in my life. Why? Because I didn't live through drama, lived in drama and made up my mind when God found me. You ain't never got to worry about me and drama. And the God, God is God ready. God, God is so, God is so smooth. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? God, God is so smooth that He encounters you in your mess and sweet talks you out your mess. Ooh, y'all, y'all. I wish I had somebody to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, 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 ladies, come here, come here, come here, ladies, come here. Y'all, y'all ever meet that Casanova brother? Uh, he had, he had a divorce like your pastor. <laughs> and, 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 and you weren't even looking for a man, but he walked up on you and said, what's up, baby? <laughs> yeah, he was like, everything going crazy in your life. He said, baby, that's all right. <laughs> you still look good. You, I, I look good. <laughs> and then you got to get that little blushing thing going on. Ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. And the brother starts sweet talking you and telling you, uh, uh, it's going it's to get better, baby. Let me tell you right now, baby, if you just get with me, it's going to get better. In fact, if you lose that zero and get with this hero, you're going to win the ball game. 
uh, baby, I need you to understand that you ain't met nothing till you met me. <laughs> Oh, baby, I'm going to take care of everything. I'm going to take care of your bills, your nails, and your hair. <laughs> if you can't grow no hair, I'm going to buy you some hair, baby. But it's going to be all good and gravy from here on. Now, you ever met a brother that can sweet talk you? Some of y'all ladies can't testify because you fell for him. And, and here's, you better understand this, that God will sweet talk you as well. But God means everything he says. Can I talk to some real brothers in here? Anytime you sweet talking a girl, you got to lie a little bit. You can exaggerate a little bit. But let me help y'all out. God doesn't exaggerate and God doesn't lie. When God look at you and say, things are going to get better, he really means means it. When he said, I'm going to take care of you, he really means it. He'll put a roof over your head and food on the table. God really means it. When God looks at you and say, baby, you going to look better after this, he really means it. No exaggeration. And he ain't lying. And he ain't trying to get nothing. Now here's 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 the problem. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Come on, come close, come close. Here, come close. Here's the problem. Most of you won't engage in a conversation long enough with God. <sighs> come on, fellas. Where, where, where my real where, 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 my, where my real dogs at? Before y'all got married and got old, where my real dogs at? Y'all don't raise your hand. I'm just playing. Yeah. Brothers know, brothers know, brothers know, brothers know, brothers know. Real, real ones, real ones know, real ones know, real ones know, real ones know. If, 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 if you give me some conversation. <laughs> Leonette, close your ears, close your eyes. CJ, let me talk to you. Remember, if you give me some, some conversation. Uh, 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 just, 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 just talk to me for a little. A little while, just, just, if you give me some conversation, I'm telling you, by the end of it, I'm going to work that thing out. And by the end of it, you didn't forget what you said in the first five minutes. You forgot you didn't even want a boyfriend. Now you're like this, can I, can I have you forever? But if you just be in the conversation long enough, you see, some of us won't talk to God long enough for him to become my lover. Ooh, y'all, y'all. <laughs> you get scared the moment he gets close to you, and you let all your past experiences mess you up with the best man you've ever met because you got jacked up in the past. But if you talk to God long enough, I promise you, he will talk you out of your sin. Y'all, y'all don't want to, y'all don't want to with me. He'll talk you out of your issue. Uh, he'll talk you out of your proclivity uh, if you talk to him long enough and be real with him. Uh, if you don't trust him, uh, just look at him and say, Lord, uh, I don't trust. You, but engage in the conversation uh, and he'll walk you through that thing. He'll, he'll say, baby, have I ever left you? Uh, have I ever forsook you? Uh, when you needed me, uh, was I always there? Uh, when you called my name, uh, did I answer you? Uh, when you fail, uh, it was me to pick you up. Uh, when you was depressed, uh, it was me to cast the demons away. Uh, he'll talk to you uh, and let you know uh, you can trust on this, baby. Uh, when you lean on me, uh, I'll put you back up. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that has talked to him long enough. See, see, the moment, the moment it gets too close, the moment he goes to your insecurities, the moment he taps into your hurt, and then you want to put up your walls. I'm through talking. Psh. You like all the rest of the people. You just want something out of me. Now, if you think I'm lying, if you think I'm lying about these encounters, I want you to go look in the book and look at that woman at the well who entangles in a conversation with Jesus. And the moment it gets a little close, she tries to throw up a wall, but she keeps on talking. And by the end of the conversation, y'all ready for this? She runs back into the same town that everybody is gossiping about her and say, come see a man that told me everything about myself. She wouldn't worry about the five husbands or the man she was sleeping with right there. She wouldn't worry about the mamas. All she knew was I had a conversation with somebody that looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. I had a conversation with somebody that assured me that his love wasn't going to run out, that he was going to always be there. And all I got to say is, if he loved me like that, I got to tell somebody else. Feel, 
filthy rags and clean hearts. Y'all ready? Y'all still there? I told you, I didn't know if I was going to shout. I don't know if I was going to teach. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't just preach, teach. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. Different different encounters. All of us have different encounters. Y'all ready? Same results. Now, here, 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 here. I'm going to mess up your theology. I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. You ready? There are no stepchildren in Christ. There ain't no illegitimates in our God. The same results. Even though we all have the same background story, even though we all have individual encounters, we all come on the other side with the same results. And the same results as this. David put it best. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Now, y'all ready for this? David lied. David cheated. David killed a man. David tried to take over when it wasn't his season. And when it was his season, he tried to go take a break. David let God down more than you can count. And I don't care how bad you are, ain't nobody in here as bad as David. And yet God says to David, that is a man after my own heart. Now, if God can say that about a liar, an adulterer, and a murderer, what can he say about you and your little issues you bring to him? It's all about one thing. Will you look at God and say, create in me a clean heart? I know I'm wrong. I know I failed. I know I messed up. But create in me a clean heart. And why you at it, Lord? Transform my mind huh, so I can think like you. Huh. Transform my mind huh, can I can receive you. Huh. Transform my mind huh, that I'll know how to talk like you. Huh. And while you're at it, Lord, huh, wash my mouth out. Huh. I don't need no Listerine, huh, but wash my mouth out huh, that I don't talk like I used to talk. Huh. Wash my mouth out huh, that I don't say what I used to say. Huh. Wash my mouth out. Huh. And Lord, while you're at it, huh, just start washing my whole body. Huh. Is there anybody? here huh, that you like Peter right now. Huh? Lord, don't just wash my feet, huh, but wash all of me. Huh? Wash my hands. Huh? Wash my head. Huh? Wash my body huh? so I can be more like you. Huh? And while you're at it, Lord, huh? renew huh, this old spirit of mine huh, that I want to run on huh, in your name. Hmm. I want to be like the woman huh, at the well. Huh? I want to tell everybody huh, come see a man huh, that told me everything huh, about myself. Uh, this ain't no secret. Uh, I wish I had somebody uh, that you know where God found you. Uh, that you know your encounter uh, was authentic. Uh, one songwriter said, uh, this ain't no ordinary praise. Uh, this ain't no ordinary worship. Uh, if you knew what I knew, uh, if you've been where I've been, uh, then you ought to have a praise uh, on the inside uh, that it ain't ordinary. Uh, this ain't no church praise. Uh, this ain't no church worship. Uh, but the Lord uh, Save my soul. I was on my way to hell and the Lord stepped in. I was on my way to hell and the Lord picked me up. I was on my way to hell and the Lord carried me. Is there anybody here that know that you know, that you know that you know I might be a filthy rag, but this morning I put on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord he don't see me no more but he sees Jesus that that's covering me. Uh, somebody said, Davis, uh, what does that mean? Uh, let me help you out. Uh, if you didn't take a bath last night, uh, but you ain't stinking, uh, put on some cologne, uh, and folks can't tell. Uh, that's what it means. Uh, when you put on the Lord Jesus, uh, you might be messed up, uh, but I got some covering it up. Uh, it's the blood. Uh, it's the blood uh, that's covering it up. Uh, that's why I walk better. Uh, that's why I talk better. Uh, that's why I'm better. Uh, Cause the Lord uh, put him on every day uh, Wake up in the morning uh, Putting on Jesus uh, Throughout the day uh, Put on Jesus uh, Make sure it fit right uh, Make sure it's covered everywhere And the Lord will uh, Order your steps uh, The Lord will uh, Right on your lips uh, The Lord will Yeah 
He'll use you for his purpose. Filthy rags, but clean hearts. You want to know how to find that greater grace? Find your purpose in him. He already knows your story. He watched it unfold. And he was there all, every step of the way. How do I know? Because you didn't die in your mess. <laughs> Some of y'all ought to shout it right there. When you know how messy you've been and how many bad situations you've been in, I dare you just look over your shoulder and say, I thank God he didn't let me die. And <laughs> I need some real folk up in here that can stand on your feet and just do this for me and say, I thank God he didn't let me die back there. <laughs> oh, I thank God he didn't let me die. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all don't know what my back there being, but but I thank God He didn't let me die. He didn't let me die back there. And oh, if y'all step out a little bit, and if I shout a little bit, and if I jump up, you understand? It's because I'm grateful that He didn't let me die back there. Because if He didn't love me, and He would have let me die back there, I'd be in hell. But God loved me enough that He wouldn't let me go. I need some real folk up in here that even when I didn't know him, he knew me and wouldn't let me go, wouldn't let me go when I was back there. He was patient with me. His patient, loving kindness. I don't find that in him. I found that before him. Once I got in him, I realized that was patient, loving kindness. And when the enemy tried to take my life, he wouldn't let it happen. And so I thank God that he didn't let me die back there. And then I got to shout because I see myself up there. Y'all ought to do that and say, up there. Y'all, y'all, I know I don't look like much now, but y'all don't understand. I, every once in a while, God let me see what I'm going to look like up there. And I'm stronger up there. I'm, I'm wiser up there. I'm better. I'm better up there. And y'all, y'all got to excuse me, but when you grew up on food stamps and you grew up on free lunch up there, look a whole lot, look a whole lot better. When, when you had to come up the rough side of the mountain up, up there, just look a little better. And I thank God for up there. But when you really see me lose my mind in my worship, it's because I realize where I am right now. <laughs> I don't wish I had somebody to understand. Every once in a while, I just look at God and say, Lord, I thank you because I don't deserve any of this. I, I'm the chief of sinners. I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm the chief of sinners. But Lord, I thank you. I thank you for today's mercy. I thank you for today's grace. I, Thank you for today's dispensation of you. And every once in a while, I dare you just to start looking around you and start appreciating what God is doing for you right now. I don't know about y'all, but some of y'all to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but God held your mind. Y'all, I dare you to just spin around a little bit. You ought, you ought to be out there on skid row, but God made a way. You ought to be the one out there crazy, but God did his thing. Y'all got to excuse me. I, I didn't forget about y'all. I'm thinking about what God did in my life. I do not have nothing, but I got a little bit of something. And when I think about where I am, where I am in him right now, that's when I really lose my mind. Because I know God's not a respecter of persons. And for whatever God is doing for you right now, do me a favor and help me preach. Look at your neighbor and say, he'll do the same for you. In fact, really help me preach. Look at him again and say, in fact, he got better for you. <laughs> Yeah, he got better for you. Why? Because I don't know what you've been through. And if you've been through anything like I've been through a word, he got better. Sometimes I ask God, Lord, why? Why me? Not just on bad stuff. I'm talking about on good stuff. I look at God, why? Why me? And God responds, why not you? 
I don't bless you because of your goodness. I don't bless you because you're perfect. I bless you in spite of you because you serve me. Y'all, y'all going, you uh, <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all about to make me run up and down these aisles in a minute. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That you got that I serve you blessing on you. That I serve you favor on you. That every night you still pray, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. But God's still blessing you because you're serving him. Every night I'm still saying, Lord, and I ain't. I ain't religious no more. I ain't talking about no, Lord, forgive my sins of omission and commission. No, 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 no. I go ahead and reflect on my day. Lord, forgive me for 7 o'clock this morning when the phone rung and I wasn't talking about holy. Forgive me when I was in McDonald's and I told them five times I want a drink with no ice and they put ice in it. And my mind wanted to say some, y'all, come on, walk with me. But he keeps reminding me, as long as you serve me, there's greater grace for you. Because you found your purpose, there's greater grace for you. And so that's why we got not just come in church and sit down, but we come in church to find our purpose. That we might go out there and serve. We tap into God's greater grace. Because anytime God's going to give you something bigger than you, he's got to give you some grace for the bigness. And so I thank God for using vessels like us, vessels like David, vessels like Paul, vessels like Peter. Lord, I thank you for using vessels, vessels like us that got a background, we got a history. If we's in the world, we say we got some skeletons in our closet, but they ought not have no meat on them. But don't ever think you ain't got none. But when we find our purpose, we do that in spite of our skeletons. Thank you for using that woman at the well. Thank you for telling us the backdrop of her story. Not only did she have five husbands, but the one she was with right now wasn't hers. But you still saw fit to have a conversation with her. And even when she was trying to be religious, you saw through all of that to see what she really wanted was she wanted someone to love her soul. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't cut the story off at the well. Because then some of us will be justified in just having a conversation. But you gave us the other part of it that she ran back. She evangelized. God's bringing us to a season where the folks that we got to go talk to, it's going to take all of us. It's no longer just going to be a deacon thing, no longer going to be a preacher thing, no longer going to be an evangelistic ministry thing. It's going to take all of us to go out there and to share Jesus. Not the pretty testimony you've been lying about, but the truth of what God really did in your life. It's going to take us to go out there and tell some folk that I don't look like what I've been through that I got some scars because I've been through some things, but I got delivered. I got set free. And I want to tell you who did it. When they hear our authentic testimonies, they'll be able to see our hearts. And that heart has to be pure of love. If God can love you and your stuff, Amen. Then he can love them in their stuff. And all he asked me to do is listen, to do the introduction and to open up my arms. I'm closing. But, you know, I always tell y'all stories about myself and got to be transparent because I'm your pastor. 
God gets you ready for your purpose even before you get into your purpose. And so growing up in Tulsa, I was the matchmaker. <laughs> I used to find out who my homeboys like. And because my voice was a little bit deeper than theirs, I had to go talk to the girls on their behalf and match them up. Amen. Matchmaker. I did that for a whole long time and had some success in matching some folk up. And I said, Lord, why would I be a matchmaker way back then? What do they got to do with today? And he says, listen, you just got saved, and you're working for me now. And I want you to take those same matchmaker skills you had back then and use them in the kingdom. Instead of the homeboys wanting a girl, you tell them that, listen, I am the one that wants them. <laughs> and tell them all the good stuff about me. You know, if you're going to be a matchmaker, you got to be able to, to dress somebody up, you know what I'm saying, with your words. And so sometimes my homeboys were a little square. And they want some cute girls. And I'd tell them, they said, mm, he don't look like nothing. I said, girl, listen, let me tell you something. He got an allowance. He lifting weights. He getting bigger. We got to learn how to be the matchmaker for God. He's seen you in your sin. And he said, I wanted you. He just sent me over to talk to you on his behalf to make the introduction. And they the matchmakers in here know that your job was just to get the two people together to have the conversation. Then you step back and you let him do what he do. It's time for you to go make some matches out there to let them come into a conversation with God and to let him do what he do. Somebody here right now, listen, you've heard this message and this message was for you. That this message has spoken to you. Don't get it twisted. We got the same story, filthy rags. But God's been encountering you and he's been encountering you on daily basis in different situations. And the same results is that we come into his family and we become his children. And so if you're here today and this word has touched your heart, I just want to be the matchmaker today. I just want to introduce you to God. As we're standing all over the sanctuary, this word is talking to you. Listen, don't wait on nobody else. Come just as you are.